And there's some great dishes that are made, and Rose, you already touched on that. What, if you guys had to eat brains to survive and live, what would your favorite meal or dishes be? Huh. Oh, I know mine. I could have mine. If it's in a Thai green curry, I, I, can, I can eat anything. If, you, if I can eat poo-poos if it was in a green curry. I love green curry. My mom right. makes the best. Yeah, Battered and deep fried. Battered and deep fried. <laughs> Papardelle pasta, some brain ragu. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I'll probably go with uh, some macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Instead of bacon bits, brain bits. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds all right. That sounds okay. I think I'd do nachos with some brains on top. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. I, I would do yeah, brain brains. parmesan. Uh -huh. Shout out mm. to my vowels. <laughs> Italians. <laughs> Italians. Yeah. What would you do? Uh, I, would pro I would do the turkey brain chili. Been there, done that. It's delicious. <laughs> I'll go back for seconds. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <gasps> that's right. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Has anybody else dressed up in that? Or are you the only one? I haven't seen any, but. So good. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, we all awesome. noticed. You. We saw you come. So you have a brain and a hand. Awesome. You got the thank you. details. It's awesome. Um, thanks. Um, now I'm flustered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my question was actually about, in the finale, about uh, Natalie. She was taken away for them to, you know, try some cure thing on her. Um, and that's the last we hear of her. We don't see her or anything. So I was wondering if she's, if that's going to come back into play at all, or if that's the end. Uh, yeah, it comes back into play. Um, in As we start season three, Major is right back on the hunt for Natalie. He wants to figure that out. He feels like he made a promise to her that he did not keep, and he wants to fix that. Thank you. Woo! All right. Yeah, let's yeah. Go. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amy, and I'm from Carson City, Nevada. And obviously, I'm a big Eye Zombie fan, but I'm also a big Harry Potter fan. Woo! <laughs> and I'm part of the Hogwarts Running Club. And one of the things we do is sort ourselves into the houses. So I was wondering if any of you identify as belonging to a particular house. Slytherin. Can you name all the houses Slytherin. again? Just for us? I would be, I would be Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Slytherin. Put Blaine in Slytherin. Thank you. I put Anders in Slytherin. <laughs> Both of them. I actually did the sorting hat. It said Slytherin, but I feel Gryffindor, but it says I'm Slytherin. What do you mean? There's a test. No, you wear the hat, man. Yeah, and it tells you. They put you. it on your head, innit? Ah, come on. <laughs> That's what you... Is, is, there, is there like a huff and puff? Hufflepuff, yeah. yeah. Puff, okay, I'll be that. That's not a house. <laughs> That's not a house. <laughs> Gryffindor. This is Gryffindor, right? Yeah, Gryffindor for me. Uh, yeah. I'd be Gryffindor, yeah. Uh. All right. What are you? you? What are you, yeah, by the way? Yeah, what are you? What, what do you identify yourself as, Starlin, Carson City? <laughs> I'm a Ravenclaw. Nice. Oh, yeah, you are. There you go. Cool. Popular answer. Yeah, yeah, much more popular than ours. Yeah. I'm a Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you two people. I don't care. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi, I'm Xanthi. I'm from Austin, Texas. And Woo! Hey! Look the horn. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> Um, I had a question for Rose or anybody else who wanted to answer, and um, that's if Liv's abilities have given any of you insight on uh, human nature or like how different everybody is that you maybe didn't have before you started the show. Y I actually found the one um, brain, I've enjoyed all of the brains, there's different things about each of them that are, are like, whether it's learning a physical skill or humorous or something, there's always something to enjoy. And the one I didn't enjoy playing was the start of season two, episode one, where I was like the Archie Bunker, bigoted, racist kind of brain. And it was actually probably quite a good exercise because, you know, you tend to hear these tirades that these people say and feel so strongly, like, that I just don't want to engage or think about it. And in a weird way, it was, it was definitely kind of, 
like I didn't I didn't enjoy that episode to film. Like I really I found it quite upsetting. But thinking about like trying to understand where people come from and and where their kind of conditioning of their minds comes from, and you know this guy's in chronic pain and maybe that's changed his outlook on the world. I think like especially given certain things that are going on at the moment, like it's very important to to like try and understand where thinking that you disagree with comes from rather than um, just shutting your mind to it. Yeah, so that's mine. I, I learned a lot. I, I was really touched and um, connected most with uh, stripper brain. That was, <laughs> was, I, I honestly it really changed how I go about my day-to-day -day life. Can I tell you, actually, we were filming in a strip club and uh, Ali and I were you know, very professional and were having to do all this stuff and there were lots of amazing dancers around us. That is the only day in two seasons of shooting that Raul volunteered to come down and just check everybody was going okay. <laughs> On and off day. Make sure that, you know, we were all well fed and coffeed and watered and it was very present, which was strange, Raul, actually. I do have to tell you one thing about stripper brain is that there's a, I threw in a joke there to a, a girl that I knew who was a, a stripper and was going to law school and she uh, graduated this year from law school. Yeah. yeah. Law school. I will not name her, but she did. And so there. Portia. Her name is not Portia. Oh. Helvetica. <laughs> not Helvetica. Oh. Kip Boss came up with that name, and I think it's the best stripper name ever. <laughs> what? Because it's a what font. Was it? Hel Hel Helvetica. 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 Oh my God. <laughs> what did you say? You said pelvic one. I thought you said pelvic one something. I don't think. <laughs> That's a little on the nose, uh, on the something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bethany. I'm from San Diego. My question is for Rose and the producers. What's up with the wig? Can we expect eventually maybe a full bleach for Rose? Go complete zombie? You mean for me in my real life? Yeah. My hair is like a bale of hay that's like hot glued on my head. It's so fragile. It's like rubbish. This would just snap if I tried to. Rose would be bald it. in real life, just like any of us would. Except how do you? Yeah. How it's not bald. <laughs> <laughs> because he actually dyes his hair. Oh, is, that, is that, Do I? Is that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, the first season, I said to the boys, I, it, was, it, was, it was crazy because Malcolm had a tragedy at his barbershop in LA, and like me, Buckley, Raul, and, oh, and yeah. Malk were it, literally like dudes just like talking about hair. Like, <laughs> on and on. Dude, dude, show us pictures, bro. What's <laughs> up, dude? He was so upset. And we, we sorted it out. But then a few days later, I go in and got my hair dyed. And I ran my head through my hand through it, and it was snowing on my head. And I was like, it hurt, my scalp hurt. And I was like, dude, in that same text chain, I was like, bros, next time you look for me, do not look for David Anders. Look for young Ed Harris. Because <laughs> it's going. It's happening. It's a long, I've got to say, I'm thing. most upset to just learn that I'm included in these toilet, like these <laughs> text chains with the boys that are just full of toilet humor and like just real <laughs> rubbish. I get left off the one about hair that you that you <laughs> we, get see, from? we get serious. We got our serious <laughs> chains deep stupid. and meaningful. We were there for each other. Rose is a major trooper with the wig because she has to wear that for like 15 yeah, hours a day. So no she's chore. pretty pretty badass for just putting uh, up with yeah. it. I've given her a couple head massages after work when she really needs it. <laughs> and we do have oh. a new wig this year. So, oh, oh. <laughs> ouch. Thank um, you. <laughs> no, it is good. We're, we're working on it. Um, I also have an incredibly difficult scalp. I have like really sensitive skin, so it, I feel so sorry for the department. I mean, they just can't really put any glues or things on my head because it just explodes. So, um, yeah, it hasn't been an easy one to work out, and I think they've done a great job, and we're really excited about season three, how the wig's going to look. We think it's going to be even better. I also have to say, if that face is there and you're looking at the wig, I really don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I have no response to you, kind of, because there's that. <laughs> it, the wig, it, it brings up an interesting question, because no one at Fillmore Graves has your look, has the zombie look, and, and they all believe in tanning and dying, like tan and die, and they actually get, will get on your case about Go undercover. Yeah, hide, will she ever tan? Your... Do you think maybe or try it? I, I don't think so. I, it, it, well, and here's the thing, and it, and it would make a lot of creative sense for Liv to try to blend in now. Um, and yet, 
the whole show started with uh, the head of Warner Brothers Television Development handing me the comic book and showing the front cover and saying, this is the new heroine for the CW, go write it. And, uh, and that, it, 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 like, you are our poster and yeah. that, that wig and that hair. And how do you just Can cosplay also, hot girl? I, <laughs> like, right, exactly. No, I was going to say, I'm, one I'm of my favorite things right no, no, no. It, like, about this whole show, this experience, is when I get to come, A, and meet the fans, because you guys are the reason we can do our jobs, we are so grateful. It's like... It, it's an honor, and we like interacting with you all on Twitter and, and hearing your thoughts. But when I get to see people dressed as Liv, it's just like, awesome. it's, yeah, it's, it's we, we film in this vortex where we're just on set and we're creating this thing and we don't even really know what the outcome is gonna feel like. And then we get to kind of see that it's impacted people and that people care and, and wanna dress up like her and wanna dress up like a girl who isn't the kind of girl next door, every woman, like she's, she's her own thing and she's eccentric and, a striking look, and I, I feel really, really proud to be associated with that. I love that she doesn't try to um, fit in. She embraces who she is. I actually listened to David Bowie as the music for Live. I don't even know if I told you that. I've always listened, like that's my soundtrack, because there is just something about that embracing your inner freak and that being what's sexy and beautiful about you. So I don't want Live to change, all right? You heard it here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi. I'm Madeline. I'm from Southern Oregon. Hey, Madeline. Hey, David. See, we grew up next door to each other. <laughs> it's true. We had we shared a garden, and my, my dad had a garden. We walked through the garden, and then we walk into her backyard, which had a pool. Yeah, so he learned pick. how to swim in my I pool. I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought this was This a, is Madeline. I, I thought this Madeline was a, Corsi. a Hi, bit. Maddie. Wow. Hi. Um, I've also been told I'm the last question. All right. Yeah. Um, so my question is, um, for the actresses and the writers, um, with the culture of feminism right now and writing your show, what themes and responsibilities do you feel come up for you uh, when writing strong female characters? Rob? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's, it's an interesting question because, like, we... Um, one of the things that we said going into this year was we wanted a, like, we're going to replace Steven Weber with another big character, another guest star, and not necessarily the big bad, but a morally complex, it's occupying the space that we used to have a big bad, and, and we wanted her to be tough and powerful and badass, um, but you ask yourself the question, or at least I do as a writer, then if she, if she turns out to be bad, then are you, are, are you writing a cool, empowering female character, or are you writing a bad guy? But I think it's cool, I think it's good, I, you know, it's, but it is something that I, um, that I struggle with, is, you know, if she is badass and she is smart, and what if she does some evil things? Is that an empowering female character on TV? Uh, answer? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just think a lot of times when we're we're writing or cons it's always in my head, and I always feel this weird pressure. And you could just go down that rabbit hole, and then if you go fully down the rabbit hole, you never do anything. And it's also kind of oddly also disrespectful because then if I have to worry every time I write something that I'm making women look bad, then shouldn't I be worrying about making men look bad? And shouldn't I just write women like people and not give a shit? So. Uh, you know, when I was doing the stripper episode, I was like, is this bad? And then I thought, well, there's women out there who are strippers. I didn't invent it. <laughs> I didn't invent, <laughs> like, it's, it's just, just writing people as honestly as you can and trusting that if at the end of the day people have a problem with it, a woman wrote it. Mm. And she's an EP, and she got paid, and she's fine with it. So. <laughs> I feel like, um, I think actually having, you know, over various, uh, pilot seasons and looking at different jobs over the years. I've read hundreds of act like character descriptions for actresses and it's like there are just there were so many that were like the the wife of or the girlfriend of or the daughter of and that was boring. And then there were so many that were like tough, badass, that was all they were. And that's just as boring. That's not that's not a complex, strong, interesting character to me. What I liked about what, how these guys write, and I, I mean, you can see it in Veronica Mars, you see it in this show, in various characters, I think. Like, there's power in vulnerability, and there's, um, 
being a multifaceted, interesting female who can be really strong and also can be incredibly weak and need things. That's not something that we should be shying away from. That's something that it's innate. It's for men and women. And I think sometimes we start to write these really, or I have to read scripts of these really stereotypical kind of tough chicks. And I just, I mean, personally, I, I feel like that's not my idea of true strength. I think like being able to embrace who you are it, for whatever that means is ultimately the, the, the kind of goal. Um, so I feel like these guys have written a character where I'm not afraid sometimes to need help. I'm not afraid to offer help. I, you know, she's on her own journey and, and that's, again, it's not the driving force is necessarily trying to communicate something that plays into everybody else's ideas, but just communicate a real person with real feelings and, and not, not perpetuate um, ideas that we don't believe in, you know? And Madeline, I drove by our houses the other day, our old houses. They're still there. I miss them. I'm gonna text you later, okay?